Hi everyone, welcome to Torah On Demand. I'm Rabbi Yael Rydberg. In the wilderness of Sinai are the opening words of the Book of Numbers, the fourth and longest book of the Torah. Despite the textual interruption of the Book of Leviticus, we now pick up the story with a census, taking an account of all those who will embark on their journey to the Promised Land. The wilderness is a powerful backdrop for the Israelites' journey from slavery to freedom, as well as the landscape for the giving and receiving of the Torah, which Jewish communities will celebrate next week on Shavuot. It is the nexus at which contemporary Jews find themselves identifying both tribal and covenantal attachments to Judaism, the Jewish people, and the land of Israel. The Midrash teaches that the Torah was given in the wilderness so that no one could claim it as a possession. The Torah opens us to transformation, just like open spaces invite imagination. Moving from reality towards aspirational vision is something that each of us does during our lives many times over. As the Israel-Hamas war, however, enters its ninth month, reality is overwhelming. The remains of five more hostages were identified. The advancement into Rafa has been met with continued devastation. Is there really a ceasefire hostage deal on the table or are Hamas and Netanyahu's government just determined to continue the war? How much more can Northern Israel take from the Hezbollah rockets that result in widespread fires? I found myself once again this week emotionally paralyzed to some degree. Like a trek through the wilderness, the starting point and the end of the journey are often invisible once you get on your way. Only the immediate, never-ending landscape around you is accessible, which could elicit optimism or pessimism. Which way do we go next? It is possible, I think, to pray that all the leaders in the region find their moral compass and return all hostages, destroy Hamas's terror capabilities enough that new leadership could emerge that could bring peace and stability to the border. It is possible to condemn without reservation the settler violence and extremism on the West Bank. It is also possible to open our hearts to the wishes of the family of now deceased hostage Chaim Perry, Zichrono Livracha, that while bringing his body home would be meaningful, they do not want a single life to be sacrificed for it, not a civilian and not a soldier. And it is possible to listen to the pleas of mothers of Israeli combat soldiers in an article last week, and they wrote, I can't believe I'm doing this. I struggle not to cry. I hand him another sandwich I packed for the journey. I feel like Abraham after God told him to sacrifice his son Isaac. I share these words as a mother and a member of a movement of parents of Israeli combat soldiers who have been fighting in Gaza for almost eight months. Our message to our leaders, the decision makers, is simple. Stop. Enough. It is these mothers of combat soldiers who have issued a call now that with no negotiated political solution on the horizon, they can see, and we can too, that we are not coming any closer to freeing the hostages and more and more soldiers are killed and wounded every day. With all of these voices in my head, I felt all the feelings this week. And I was reminded of noted educator Parker Palmer's notion of the tragic gap. It is the gap between hard realities and what we know to be possible aspirationally because we have seen glimpses of those aspirations all around us. And we call it tragic in the classic sense of the word because we are actually not likely going to achieve the perfection or the utopian vision or the end result we seek. And yet we can't stop moving towards it. Most of us stand in these gaps all the time. And sometimes, according to Palmer, we veer off towards one extreme, which he calls corrosive cynicism, meaning nothing's ever gonna change, or another, irrelevant idealism, which sounds like everything's just fine. We're all going to be fine. Don't worry. 
The ongoing suffering and tragedy in Israel and Gaza will not be solved as a zero sum game. There will have to be some understanding of movement towards mutual responsibility and equally important mutual recognition. At the moment, those things feel unattainable and even impossible. Shavuot celebrates the giving and the receiving of the Torah and our narrative imagines that revelation happened in that same gap in the wilderness, which propelled the Israelites forward because without the Torah, they would have no sense of how their lives could be. They didn't venture forth with certainty, but despite their uncertainty, we Jews receive Torah in our day to envision a just society that we strive for and hope to achieve in the gap between the realities of current Israeli and Palestinian suffering and the yet unrealized resolution of the war, we cannot let paralysis take over. The hostages must be returned, alive or dead. Hamas must suspend its genocidal determination against Jews and against Israel. And the Israeli government must agree to a way forward for its citizens and its neighbors. So as we enter the wilderness this week, we cannot be silent about Israel's right and obligation to defend its borders and its people. We cannot be silent about what is needed for Israel to remain a democratic, values-driven nation committed to tolerance and justice and humility in pursuit of redemption and revelation. Let there please be a negotiated agreement to bring the hostages home and an end to this war. That would be a Torah, an instruction for the future that I would most want to receive. Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Mm -hmm.